Okay, what are we looking at today? Well, we're looking at this bike round the corner. Here we are. Just been to fetch my helmet and camera. And we're going for a ride round the lawn. Stay in first gear, I think. Don't want to, don't want to skid or anything silly. Not that this has got a huge amount of power, but I'm sure it's got enough power to spin the wheel on grass. Yep, it's running quite nicely. Sounds reasonable, if a bit clattery. Yeah, that was okay. Nice little run on the lawn. Easy to find neutral on this bike too. Right, there we go. One bike that's been refurbished. Uh, well, I finished it quite a long time ago, but it's been so wet and miserable and cold, uh, I haven't bothered to do a walk around. And last year I did a couple of mopeds I'd owned for years, if uh, anyone remembers. And I've dragged this one out of the back of the garage uh, with a view to getting this one at least running and looking reasonable. And uh, there she is. It's a 350 flat twin Douglas. Not many of these around. As you can see, it's in reasonable condition. But as I always say on all vlogs, they always look better on film. And when you get up close, that's when you start to see imperfections. What have I done to it? Well, not a great deal really. Um, just general refurbishing of the distributor and all those little electrical bits and pieces and a good clean up and the distributor cover is new. Uh, the distributor cover is here and it's a rather beautiful piece of pressed aluminium and the company was so short of funds towards the end of their life that they made a a cover out of glass fibre which was nowhere near as nice but it just showed the condition that uh, the company was in and sadly they went bust in uh, 1956 I believe and this is a 1957 and I think that all of the bikes were bought by a very large company in London that uh, people my age will well remember, Pride and Clark, um, in Stockwell Road. I've been there a time or two uh, in the past for bits and pieces. They were a huge company. And they then sold these on at discount. And eventually this one found its way to Newcastle. Uh, Cowies at Newcastle. They had branches in, as it say, Newcastle, Stockton, Durham and Sunderland. So that's where it sort of ended up. And it was restored by a Birmingham gentleman, not beautifully but reasonably. And uh, when I was about nine, I, I remember coming out of my junior school seeing these, one of these, and it just knocked me out. Uh, you know, at nine I wasn't that interested in anything, uh, certainly not bikes, but it just looked so super in stone and green, a lovely dark green and um, I just thought it was a cracking machine to look at. Uh, unfortunately it looks better than, than the reality because they made a huge mistake making a 350, um, very low powered. 
Uh, there were plenty of singles around at the time with similar power and uh, they were probably cheaper um, they just didn't sell these twins people wanted the simplicity of a single back uh, back in the mid 50s you had a fantastic single 350 called a b31 bsa uh, there were loads of sing 350 singles which was a sort of popular choice for the working man back then they didn't have the uh, 250 learner law back then and it was a good mid-range capacity for commuting to work and perhaps a bit of use at the weekend so uh, they knocked out 350s always towards the end Douglas the one before this was called the Mark series and actually they were a better bike in, in all sorts of ways but you know this is about the Dragonfly not the not the mark. Uh, needed more power if they'd upped it to 500 I think they might have done well because the frame is oh it's just over the top and that would handle well over a hundred horsepower without any problem at all. It's it's just built really well I mean it's uh, it, it, uh, it really confounds me that they could spend all that time on detailing. Uh, Earl's Forks for example cost umpteen times more than telescopics uh, but it makes the bike very comfortable. Um, you can't sort of fling it around but my word if you want a comfortable ride it, it's hard to find a more comfortable bike than this. Um, I'd say it was more comfortable than my Golden Flash actually. It, it really does uh, handle the uh, the bumps very well, and it's got all sorts of good adjustment. You know, when you can adjust all the footrests are adjustable. Everything is adjustable, well, except for the kickstart. Uh, pretty straightforward flat twin, overhead valve, but very clattery, and apparently they were all like that. Um, what have I done? Well, just cleaned it up really, uh, checked everything over. It's it's not, it's far from perfect, but uh, with a bit of use, uh, you can iron out all the little problems, and uh, that's really what it needs. Uh, it's got the original wheels, as far as I can see, as rims, um, and a sprayed green in the middle with and a gold line which is really nice. The, the front brake on these is, well, brake, it hardly brakes anything, so it's probably just as well it's not very fast <laughs> because the front brake is poor. The back brake is good. Um, I worked on the back brake and improved it and I was uh, going to get round to doing the, the front brake because I think they had the hub skimmed, uh, whoever did it, and um, the linings really need to be matched. Uh, or shimmed. And I never got round to the front wheel but I made the back brake work reasonably well. I put the lining on, bought some green paint and did the lining and I was going to make a carrier and pannier frames and then my 650 BSA came on the scene which is infinitely better for pillion use and uh, I've always carried a pillion so this is a, a really an ideal cruiser for a, for the, the single rider. Um, I mean, it will take a pillion, but you're looking at slow progress. I, I would say that a, a sensible optimum is 50 miles an hour cruising for this one. Uh, it's a bit difficult to see the speedo because it's flat, but one owner in the past has put some little rivets. Uh, so that you can see the needle line up with the little rivets and uh, he's marked one of th there's a little rivet there little rivet there and it it lines up at 30 miles an, uh, or is it no 40 miles an hour and at 55 so he obviously felt that 55 was a, a reasonable cruising speed whoever that was uh, as I say I've been running it in and in the 26 years I've owned it, uh, I've done 436 miles from uh, from the reconditioned engine. 
It had alpha bearing, uh, alpha crank, uh, rebore pistons, all sorts. Uh, the guy did. The tank was done professionally, uh, which uh, looks really nice. The rest of it, the respray wasn't fantastic. Um, if I was really serious about doing it up, I would do a bit of respraying here and there, I think. But uh, as I say, this lived in the back of the garage, untouched for 10 years. So I thought it was time to drag it out and just do a little bit of refurbishing. And as I sort of said, it, it's, it's looking reasonable, but there are imperfections on the paintwork here and there, little scratches and bits and pieces. Um, it did have uh, a scooter lead acid battery in the toolbox when it arrived, when it was delivered, but that bat battery shouldn't have been there. Uh, it really wasn't well um, fitted and it had fallen over in transit and uh, the acid had leaked out the, side, the drain pipe and damaged that silencer on this side. Not enough to be too concerned about, but it concerned me that the lead acid battery was uh, was a bit of a bodge. So one of the jobs I did, because it did come with a original knackered battery, I hollowed out the old battery and um, I put a Cyclone 6 volt in there uh, and it's been okay ever since. Um, only 6 volt, I'd, I'd never use it at night anyway. But uh, you can apparently uh, connect up the alternator if, if you really must. The alternator is at the front, it's easy to get to, right on the front end. Uh, most of it's fairly straightforward to, to adjust. The clutch adjustment is through a little plate there, you can get to that. The carburation isn't perfect on this, but it certainly went round the field or uh, round the lawn okay. So. Uh, there we are, that's this winter's two-wheeled project. There's been other projects of uh, other types, but this is the two-wheel project. And uh, I think it's time to put it back in the, in the garage and uh, maybe give it some use. It is uh, fully legal, it's insured and ready to go. Um, I might give it a run now that the weather seems to be improving. But you won't see many of these, not even on YouTube. They went bust and uh, I think they made about 1500 before they went pop. And I don't suppose there's many of those left now. But it's, it's more or less original. Um, the engine bars are an extra, and it's very expensive extra actually, but well worth having if you've got a flat twin. Um, it's a shame Douglas went down, but uh, in the First World War, the, most of the army bikes were very reliable, fore and aft, uh, two and a quarter uh, flat twins, and uh, they knocked out a 600cc uh, side valve flat twin called an Aero. They should have stuck with it um, and upped the capacity because I'm, I'm more or less certain that they spent far too much time on detailing that frame is far more detailed than it needs to be. It's, it's, you could easily stick a 100 horsepower engine in there, it wouldn't even know it. Uh, it's just a shame. And Douglas died a death, and uh, thankfully there's a very good club, and you can get pretty much everything for them, uh, except uh, <laughs> the ignition switch. And, um, the, these Miller ignition switches are very complicated and they need a bit of attention. That one really needs to be coming out and all the wipers and contacts are cleaning up, but it works. Uh, so I'm not going to be doing that. I've got far more uh, important things to do on other bikes. Uh, I've got one to be MOT'd if the weather holds up. Um, just coming up, that's my Blackbird and then I'm working on my Hornet uh, because that's the other one that will be on the road this year. Uh, the Golden Flash is um, in need of a bit of attention. Um, 
all the other little bikes are just kicking around the place.